Okay, this is Joel here for Seconds Out. Josh Warrington, of course, Maxi Hughes, the reason here tonight. Uh, let's start on that before we obviously talk about December the 10th. Big day, big fight. But uh, Maxi tonight, it was his night. Yeah, it was fantastic. Well, it was, he did what he had to do. Um, I say a fantastic day. And, um, I'm obviously chuffed a bit for him for, for getting the win. Um, kid is always going to be difficult. You know, the way that he fights and the, the way that he can nullify your attacks and, and spoil you. Make you look real bad, and uh, you know we nip and took it tonight. We nip and took, and I thought that Maxi was maybe getting a little bit too um, involved, trying a little bit too hard. Certainly in the first six round, it, it was really close in the first six. I think the only difference was probably Maxi's cleaner work. And I'm, yeah, of course I'm going to be fucking a little bit biased there, but when Galad were coming forward, he was just using the petty jab, and he, he won't he won't seem to do anything else. Whereas Maxi was coming forward with his backhand, and then he had the backhand up, uh, counters as well. So if I'd say majority of them first six were going back to Maxi for that reason even though some of them you could have had them level um, and then I feel like from seven, eight, nine, he had some really dominating rounds and then when you take into consideration the point coming off I probably had him like three or four rounds winning it um, you know it's crazy really because if if, if, if he don't get that point taken off one you know one just has a minute drawing and then one of them one of, one of them has him losing so you know it's a draw then isn't it so um yeah, crazy, but chuffed a bit for him. And, you know, obviously, people can say, I oh, fucking probably all this static because it's Barry. No, it's just because I know how a slippy opponent Barry can be. And if he'd lost tonight, then the fucking big Ryan Garcia fight or the Devin Haney fight or the Law Gale Lenardis fight, he goes pissing out window. So, um, yeah, I'm just chuffed to bit say he'll be able to do it tonight. How much did you play in the build up? Obviously, being that you've you fought Kit Galahad before yourself, just in, see, in, in just in terms of uh, technical advice. To be fair, I won't know. I won't help. I couldn't help really with sparring because of my jaw and stuff like that. I you know I was able to join him with some circuits and motivate him in that sense. But everything else was just um, tactical. You know, I couldn't really, I couldn't really do anything with sparring because of me because of my jaw. But um, yeah, just bits of technical advice I give him and make sure he keeps his head. Cool. Okay, December 10th, massive fight, first director in Leeds, been there before, but um, Mexican, another tough Mexican, how did you see this fight playing out? I just want to close the show early now, I, you know, I, I enjoyed myself last time against Kiko Martinez, obviously, apart from the last round, but I felt really strong and I felt at any one point I could have put close the show if I really needed to put the foot on the gas and, and close the show, so I'm looking to do something the same, you know, you'd, I've had a lot of 12 round fights and you don't get fucking paid for overtime in this game so you know get it done and then I've been wanting to unify ever since I've become world champion you know who the fuck has the has the first world title defence against someone fucking ranked higher than him in like me talking about when I fought Carl Frampton and this is my sixth world title fight and yet all of a sudden you know Lee Wood's been forced down my throat it's like fucking hell let me I have my chance of fighting another world champion, so I've got to take care of this and see what happens from there. Obviously, on the horizon, December 10th, all that matters at the moment, but on the horizon would be a, a massive fight with Leewood, whether it be in Leeds or Nottingham, we wouldn't know yet. But. Well, there's, yeah, there's, there's, there is that. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about, there's also Navarrete, there's also Ray Vargas, there's also, you know, Leo Santa Cruz, who's reportedly, well, he's got to fight Ray Vargas, and, or he's, he's looking to fight Ray Vargas, so... There, there is still them fights, obviously, for Eddie and Matchroom and, you know, domestically, yeah, it looks fantastic, and, but I've still got my eye out on them, them big fights as well. Business-wise, it might make sense to, to, to fight Nottingham Island Road against Lee Woods, so we'll just have to wait and see what comes up on the table. Just very, very quickly on Shakur Stevenson, obviously moving up from Super Feather, fought and won last night, but what do you make of that? He's, he's now a lightweight. Yeah, he's, um, I think he was always he was always a big featherweight, you know, when he was younger. It was all about, it's always about timing in this game and I think we wanted to get him in 2019 because I think he was always going to get bigger and get better as, and I think his class is really showing now as he's going through and it could be one of them who goes, becomes a 4, 5, 6 weight world champion. Thanks so much Josh, see you December.